Okay, the method section is typically 10 to 20 pages long, depending on how much data you've collected, and it consists of six major sections. The design philosophy, or your approach, whether you use qualitative approach, whether you use quantitative, whether you used a mixed methods approach, ethnographic approach, you have to describe your design philosophy, and we have some resources to help you do that. Next, you have to describe your participants who was in your study. And you want to do that in a lot of detail so that people understand your study and the kind of participants in that study. The next section, context, is a description of the environment in which the data was collected. If it was a school, you'd want to know the size of the school, the community that it was in, and a number of other details that will give the reader a sense of where your, collect where your data was collected. Next, you want to describe your data collection tools. So you might describe your demographic data, um, if you collected survey data, interview data, focus group data, observational data, each would have a subsection and you would describe in detail the data that you collected. Now, for example, if you had a survey, you would also create an appendix with that survey. And so you would refer to that. So you would say, you describe your survey and the key sections of it always referring to the appendix and the specific items that were in the section where you collected a data um, on a specific construct, for example. So you want to give the reader a clear description of the tools that you used to collect information from your participants. Next, you're going to describe the procedure. So you would start out with the consent procedure and then the data collection, how you collected, collected data, how long it took, um, details about that, enough detail so that someone could actually replicate the study. And then finally, you would include details about how you analyzed the data, maybe statistical procedures you used, maybe content analysis procedures you used, um, you would go into enough detail so that someone would understand how you actually analyze the data. So let's look at a specific example. In this case, we have the method section here in the design philosophy. And the student has stated that they have followed a pragmatic approach to methodology uh, based on Cresswell, which is a reference, an excellent reference on design philosophy depending on what philosophy you choose. There are a number there that will help you articulate the approach that you took. Next, the student described the participants. In this case, there were different participants. There was a teacher and there were students. Uh, ages were uh, provided, number of students, gender, and uh, in this case, um, whether English was a second language, um, average income in the community. So there were a number of things that described the students and gave the reader a sense of that population. In this case, the student has described the context of teaching. So this was a study on a teaching method, blogging and teaching. And they went into details about the context of that teaching, what occurred, how it occurred. So it's critical information for someone to understand how this blogging tool was used. Next, the data collection tools are provided. It's just labeled data collection, but it is a description of the tools provided. So an overview is provided. They talk about the four types of data. In this case, there was quantitative data, Likert questions, uh, qualitative open-ended questions, performance tests, and a blog analysis. And then each of those is described. But what's useful is this overview table of uh, the research question, the 
data collected that answers that research question, and then the appendix where the actual questions were asked. So it's really a nice summary, and I highly recommend that summary. Next, the specific tools are described. So in this case, there was a, a survey, mathematical confidence, and then there's a reference to an appendix, and then reliability is provided uh, that was relevant in that case. Uh, there is an attitudes to, to blogging scale, and so those are the two surveys that were done. And then there's mathematics knowledge pre and post tests. And there's quite a few tests here, so they were described in detail in a table with the specific appendices and the questions that were asked. And then blog entries were looked at and how they were looked at, the type of questions that were asked and examples of the blog entries. Okay, so that's a description of the data collection tools. Next, the procedure is described. And again, this student has chosen to give a table and it was quite useful table because it gives a step-by-step -step process of uh, how things transformed and, and it's sort of a recipe to how to do this study. So the consent forms were given prior to the study, day one, this is what's happened, week one. So it gives you a step-by-step -step process of what happened. And that's a very useful uh, table to have for the reader just to get a summary of what happened. There is a description of the specific areas here, the consent forms. Uh, the pre-studies, the knowledge tests. So it's the procedure in actually administering and collecting the data that we're concerned with. Uh, the blogging groups, and then a description of the units of study because there were three units uh, discussed here. And then the post-survey studies. And then finally, the research design and data analysis pr is presented here. So you see the research questions and then the data collection analyses. So it talks about uh, the descriptive data here, and then there was a content analysis of the blogging survey, so uh, the open-ended questions. So those, it gives you a specific breakdown of the analysis and how it's associated with specific research question. It's very, very helpful. And in that case, that's all that was needed in the data analysis. You don't have to go to each specific statistical analysis you've done. You're just giving an overview of how you chose to analyze the data.